So it's now official, it has been confirmed. We now know our main event for Impact Rebellion in April because last night at Impact Sacrifice, we unified the TNA World Heavyweight Championship and the Impact World Championship, that being Rich Swan, who achieved it because after a triumphant victory on last night's main event at Sacrifice, Rich Swan is now the first champion in Impact Wrestling history to unify the Impact World and TNA World Heavyweight Championships. Swan, who reclaimed the Impact World Championship, has now claimed and dethroned the self-proclaimed TNA World Heavyweight Champion Moose for his championship. Swan will now go on to challenge the AEW World Champion Kenny Omega in a title versus title match in the main event of Rebellion on Saturday, April 24. Before everyone asks, of course, we will be doing a watch long for uh, Rebellion on Saturday, April 24. So be sure to subscribe, bottom right hand corner. You won't miss a single thing when we go live for that. And all of the videos, of course, that we're going to be doing heading into Rebellion in April. Now, Swan won the match by escaping Moose's third attempt of lights out. On his third attempt, Swan sidestepped, which set the former TNA World Heavyweight Champion crashing shoulder first into a chair that was set up in between the middle and top rope. Swan then stacked Moose up for the pinfall victory. Swan is 136 plus days in his Impact World Championship reign since prevailing against Eric Young at last year's Bound for Glory pay-per-view. For Moose, his TNA World Heavyweight Championship reign began when he brought back the TNA World Heavyweight Championship at last year's Rebellion event. Though he called himself a legitimate champion and defended it several times, his title wasn't officially sanctioned, of course, until last month by Executive Vice President Scott Demore. Over on AEW, of course, from the AEW side of things, the AEW World Champion Kenny Omega just retained his World Championship against the former champion John Moxley in AEW's first ever exploding barbed wire death match. Omega's marquee match with Swan next month will be the second main event matchup he will be in with the Impact World Champion. So let's talk about briefly the match itself before we talk about the ramifications of it all because of course it's you know, unbelievably significant isn't it. The match itself I thought was fantastic. I, I really did think it was fantastic. Um, I was one of those unfortunate people heading into it I must say. I was one of those unfortunate people that knew the outcome heading into it. That was that was a problem. Um, I blame that on Dave Mouser and the Wrestling Observer Newsletter or Wrestling Observer Radio, whatever it was, because Dave Mouser reported, I think it was like three weeks ago or something like that, that not only were we going to get a champion versus champion unification match at Sacrifice, but we were also going to get Kenny Omega versus the Impact World Champion at Rebellion. He then also said that Rich One had won that match. So we did a report on it actually here on the channel. It was again about three weeks ago or so where we spoke about that we were going to get Rich One versus Moose at Sacrifice. It was going to be a unification match. Didn't mention that Rich One was going to win or anything like that because we're not in the business really of doing spoilers on the channel. And it was so far removed and you know ahead of uh, of one of when it was going to happen. Sacrifice and I don't know. I, I I I get why people do it because curiosity we're all humans at the end of the day and if you see spoilers and if you see you can find these results now you just you can't help yourself but click on it can you um but it was just it was you know watching it last night did it make it less enjoyable not not really because i, I enjoyed the match anyway but you knew what the outcome was going to be because it had been widely reported so that was that was a shame but again past that you know i thought the match was spectacular i i really did and Rich Swan is is a fantastic worker. He he is a fantastic worker. I still think even now, I mean, we mentioned in the report there that he's had 136 days as the Impact World Champion. There is still, and I think there's probably always going to be a, a, a proportion of people or a portion of people on social media and uh, fans of Impact Wrestling that maybe aren't completely sold as Rich Swan as the Impact World Champion. I think he's done a very good job. Frankly, I think some of the title defenses he had, whether it's Chris Bay against Moose here, I think he's I think he's done well. Um, again, there's going to be people that, for whatever reason, can't see past the cruiserweight champion in WWE and all that kind of stuff, and the dancing gimmick that he has, and him the size that he is because he's a smaller guy. No one's there is going to be people that can't see past that, and that's a shame. That's a shame. Personally, I think he's doing excellent. I think the difference between the rich one of, say, like a year ago and rich one now, I think is pretty incredible, to be honest. I think he's really, I mean, after that, actually he was out of action a year ago, but you get my point. The amount of development he's had in the in the past year is, is really incredible. I think he has stepped up to a main event level. I said this about rich one when he was having the feud with Eric Young in the first place. The moment that I saw rich one do the retirement speech and show emotion and show a character and actually have fans be you know, invested emotionally in his character. Uh, even at that point, he wasn't even the world champion yet. I said, this guy could be a main eventer. This guy can be a world champion. 
Now, obviously, it's one thing challenging and capturing the title. It's another thing defending it and having a credible world championship reign. Even some of the best wrestlers in the world have struggled with that over the course of the last few years. But I think Rich One's doing a very good job. I do think Rich One's doing a very good job. And it was always the most li likely outcome, I think. You know, Kenny Omega's the big heel. He's a heel in AEW, but he's certainly a heel in Impact Wrestling because he's from another company and he's got the Impact Wrestling Executive Vice President Don Callis in his corner and he kind of calls the shots. He's this pampered sort of prince and all this kind of stuff. Um, he's an invading force. He's always the heel in that situation. So it was always very likely, wasn't it, that Rich Swan was going to win this match because he's the babyface and he's the, the Impact World Champion. He's the one defending the honour of Impact Wrestling. So... It was always going to be him, and if you go back to the Hard to Kill match in January, of course, Kenny Omega pinned Rich One. Now, obviously, if it was going to be Kenny Omega versus Moose at Rebellion, there wouldn't be as much drama, because not only now is do we have the title versus title match, one person's going to leave with both bouts, but also... Kenny Omega has a pinfall victory over the current Impact Champion. So there certainly is this big element of doubt if Rich One can defeat Kenny Omega, which I don't think he will, at Impact Rebellion. But I do want to talk about Moose briefly before we talk about what is going to happen in the coming weeks and the future in Impact Wrestling and AEW with this match at Rebellion on the horizon. I thought Moose, honestly, I thought he was fantastic. I, I really did think he was fantastic. And again, you talk about the development of Rich Swan over the course of the last 12 months. I think the, the development of Moose has arguably been even bigger. I mean, this is a guy that's been in Impact Wrestling for a while. I mean, he made his Impact debut 2016, and I know that he was relatively green in terms of coming over from the NFL, and by the time he came over to Impact, he had been with Ring of Honor, I think, but didn't have a ton of time in the business, and it was gonna take a while, but we're talking about someone that's really finding their niche. Now I'm really finding their groove as a pro wrestler. I, th I still think there's ways to go. I think his promo game probably does need to improve slightly, but all of those pieces of the puzzle really feel like they're coming together for Moose, and they have come together over the course of the last 12 months. The look that he has, I mean, physically, he's transformed himself. If you follow his social media, you'll see that he's really got into some fantastic shape over the course of the last 12 months, and it shows in the presentation of himself on Impact Wrestling. So I think that's that's you know substantial. I think his promo game, whilst it still does need some improvement, I think it has gone leaps and bounds over the course of the last year, and sometimes that's the hardest thing to improve. You can learn the moves in the ring, and you can get in great shape, but charisma, the ability to, to, to talk and tell a story through your promos and have these different elements of your personalities and different dimension to your character, that is something that either sometimes just doesn't even come or something that takes time and a long, long time to work and work at and get to that level. And I think that Moose is really, I think he is really progressing there. And when it comes to his work in the ring as well, I think there had been previous maybe criticisms toward Moose in the past that maybe, again, he was green or he did look a bit clunky in the ring and um, some of his matches weren't great, but this is a guy at the moment, I mean, that is really just knocking it out of the park every single time. The, the, the matches he's put on in 2020 have been, 2021 rather, <laughs> I'm glad it's not 2020, but the, the matches he's put on in 2021 have been pretty incredible. I mean, you've got the I Quit match against Willie Mack, he was a last-minute addition to the six-man tag team match at Hard to Kill, and arguably he was the best competitor in that match. He had the best performance in that match, which is no mean feat, considering you've got the likes of Chris Sabin, Rich Swan, Kenny Omega, and the Good Brothers in the match. I thought Moose stole the show. And last night, once again, even though Rich Swan got the victory, arguably the most impressive performer in that match was Moose. I mean, some of the things that he's able to do, some of the athleticism that he has, you can only kind of find in pro athletes or people that have competed in sort of high elite sport like the NFL and stuff like that. So I, I think that Moose is developing absolutely wonderfully, really, as a talent. The question now will be is how long is he going to stick around in impact wrestling? Possibly that's the reason why he didn't win at Sacrifice last night. Of course, obviously, as I mentioned before, you can talk about the babyface and heel dynamic, and obviously they've always been working towards Rich One versus Kenny Omega going back to, frankly, December last year when Kenny Omega made his Impact Wrestling debut. They've always been working towards Kenny Omega versus Rich One. You could have made an argument for slotting Moose into that scenario. I still said that I felt that you could have made it a triple threat match at Rebellion, make it title versus title versus title. I didn't know if there was any real need to unify the championships last night. I, I It'll be interesting. I, I still think the end goal here is the image of Kenny Omega standing tall with the AEW World Championship, the Impact World Championship, and the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. I think that's 
I think that's the image that they're going for. But an argument could have been made, of course, to have uh, to have Moose be uh, maybe the one to challenge Kenny Omega, or at least at the very least be added to the match. I think maybe there is a degree of hesitancy from Impact Wrestling to do that, purely because, of course, Moose's contract does expire this year. I know Rich One does as well, but you would think it's probably very likely that Rich One will stay with Impact Wrestling. He's not going to go back to WWE. I think he had his fix there, and he has no interest in going back. Could he go to AEW? It's a possibility, but I don't see where he fits on the AEW roster right now. I think his best course of action is to stick around with Impact Wrestling, and I think Impact Wrestling knows that. So they're thinking, we'll, we'll, we'll put all of our eggs in the rich one basket because we know he's probably going to stay. When it comes to Moose, that's a different question. You know, Moose's contract, is, it does expire in June, I think. So we're about, what, three months away from his contract expiring. As far as we're aware, at the time of recording right now, he hasn't agreed on extending his contract with Impact Wrestling. And I think his status is far more up in the air than a rich one. I think... WWE, without a shadow of a doubt, a shadow of a doubt, will be interested in Moose. He ticks every single box for them. You know, he looks great. Um, he's got some pedigree now in the ring. He's got some charisma. He's uh, improving in the way that he talks. But most importantly, he's got this elite sport background, which WWE loves. They love um, athletes from you know, legitimate sports, if you'll call it that, um, and having that story. They love recruiting former NFL stars or former amateur wrestlers or judo, you know, people that are in MMA or strongman or anything like that. They love that. They love that. And obviously, WWE would look at a talent like Moose and be all over that. So I think they'll absolutely be interested in him. I'd be stunned if they don't make him an offer come come June. Uh, and I, I think AEW as well. I think AEW, of course, they would be interested as well in Moose. Again, for all of those same reasons, because he is developing very well. He has improved. He's got a great look. He's got a great background. And he's a reputable name. Now, is he a huge name? No, but that will come over time. So... I think maybe Impact Wrestling look at Moose and say it's not a guarantee that he is going to stay around. And this is a guy that has been with Impact Wrestling for a long, long time. Uh, so maybe Moose might look at it as to say, look, I've pretty much done everything I can do, I think, in Impact Wrestling. Am I going to be the Impact World Champion? Only if I stay around and sign a new contract. And maybe at this point of time, I know we're, we're hopefully heading towards the, the end of a pandemic. I know it's still going to be around for a while. Uh, maybe he looks at it like some other people have looked at it in Impact Wrestling recently, whether your name's Taya Valkyrie or The Rascals or anyone like that, and said, look, there's serious money to be made when it comes to WWE. And Moose has a lot of friends in WWE as well. Apollo Crews, Ricochet, um, very, very close to Moose. So I, I, I could see him. I definitely could see Moose being under the WWE umbrella, possibly being in NXT by the end of the year. And if that is the case, then obviously Impact Wrestling made the right call of going with Rich One just for that reason alone. But I think also the storyline dictates that uh, Rich One faced Kenny Omega. So we do have the, the match confirmed for Impact Rebellion in April. Again, I think that the I think the match itself obviously is massive, and I said this from the start when we first had this working relationship really be established between AEW and Impact Wrestling. What was the what was the end goal? What's the biggest thing that they could do here? What's the biggest thing that AEW and Impact Wrestling could do together? And at the time, and it looks like it's going to come to happen here. I said it was Kenny Omega versus Rich Swan, and I know some people at the time said, well, "Really, that's the biggest match that AEW and Impact Wrestling can do." And the answer was, of course. I mean, yes, it is, because it's world champion from AEW versus world champion from Impact Wrestling. Now, they've heightened the odds there and increased um, the, you know, they've, they've really upped the ante, if it will. That's the word I'm looking for, by putting both titles on the line. But look back, look at long-term storytelling. I mean, that's what people like as pro wrestling fans. We like long-term storytelling, deliberate long-term storytelling, planting seeds and then delivering on them uh, later on when they grow. And if you go back to Kenny Omega's first appearance of Impact Wrestling in December, he called it. He said, I'm about collector. He said, I used to be a comic book collector when I was a kid, and then I realized I could collect all of the comic books. So I decided to move on, and I moved on to collecting championship bouts. And I've done that. I'm the AEW World Champion. I'm the AAA Mega Champion. And at the end of Rebellion, he could be the Impact World Champion and the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. I think, as I mentioned earlier on, I think the end game and the, the image that they're looking to to shoot here is Kenny Omega to be holding all of these championships, whether it is the AEW World Championship, whether it is the Impact World Championship, the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, and the AAA Mega Championship. They're going to get all of these bouts on Kenny Omega and then hype him up as this guy that's not only dominating AEW, but he's dominating professional wrestling. And I think that's a great move for Impact Wrestling. I know some people would say, ah, that's terrible. Why would you put your, your bout on your main title 
on someone from another company. It's Kenny Omega. He's one of the biggest and best wrestlers in the world. It adds major credibility to the Impact World Championship and Impact Wrestling in general. It's a no-brainer. It's, it's an absolute no-brainer that Impact Wrestling would go for this. And he's not going to hold the title forever. I would speculate he's probably going to drop it at Slammiversary. And whoever defeats Kenny Omega for that Impact World Championship at Slammiversary, if it's a Chris Bay, if it's an Ace Austin, you make a megastar, or you make at least a very big star. You make the guy that can be carrying Impact Wrestling for the next few years going forward. For me, I would have Kenny Omega probably versus an Ace Austin as my main event of Slammiversary. Have Ace Austin defeat Kenny Omega, which would be huge for Impact Wrestling, huge for Ace Austin, and crown him as one of the youngest world champions in the in the company's history. The story's there, and you absolutely make a, a, a massive talent for Impact Wrestling going forward. So. It's a very exciting time. I think we're going to see way, way more of this going forward in Impact Wrestling over the course of the next few weeks as the build to Rebellion really begins now. And it's a very exciting time. So I'm excited to see what happens next. But of course, as always, it's just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Rich Swan unifying the Impact World Championship and the TNA World Heavyweight Championship last night at Sacrifice? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about Impact Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, AEW, WWE, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community, drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. It really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.